Hello, I'm Kushali Desai and in this module we will learn how to do socket programming in Python. Here we will learn about some computer network mechanisms and then we will dive into socket programming. In the end, we will learn how to play with data in XML or JSON format using Python. This course will also make you ready for how to start using APIs in Python. So, in this module, we will be making our own web browser. Though it will be very basic web browser, but you will get to learn what actually happens behind the scene. And you will be surprised how easy it is to do with this with Python. As you're watching these videos, you already know what is internet network and URLs. But to go ahead with this module, there are some terms that you should be familiar with to do socket programming. First of all, let's get acquainted with what happens when you type your URL and how the page you want is retrieved to your web browser. Say you go to your favorite web browser and you type your URL, say www.google.com and press enter. So, now here, you are the client and google.com is the server, meaning client is the one who requests the service and the server is the one who responds to that request. Likewise, so servers are nothing but compu computers. When you type URL into your browser, it goes to DNS server and DNS redirects to the server which you want to get your data from. Like these servers are nothing but computers and as per your path given in your URL, it will fetch the information that you want. Again, this is pretty much an abstract view. And now servers and clients are connected and then they will transfer data to each other. It is very clear that client and server will be need to communicate. Now for them to communicate, it is necessary that they both understand each other, meaning they both should speak the same language there should be some rules to follow like if two people are talking it is understood that one is speaking and another is listening and vice versa for this specific need there are protocols protocols is nothing but rules and conventions for communications between the two devices for all such set of protocols there are various computer networking models like osi which is open system interconnections or dcp models for our purpose, we will use TCP IP model to understand how client and server will communicate. Here you can see TCP IP model. This side is a client and this side is a server. Now, the request from client computer goes through many layers from the application to link and then through many routes and reaches to the server. Now, just like that server will respond to the request from many layers and to going through all these routes and will reach to client. Now, we are not going too deep into all this but you can see there is one layer, transfer layer which is also called end to end layer. So here is the place where your web browser and web servers are making connection and the data are transferred here. So now we are at our last concept for this slide and which is socket. So a socket is a computer application that talks across a network. Now there are different applications that we use. These applications have what we say a port number. A port number is used to refer to the application you want to talk to on particular host. Wow, that's all what we need to understand to go ahead with this model. Let's see how all this happens in Python. And for our rescue, there is one library in Python called Socket. Python has built-in support for TCP Socket. So now let's see some code. So here is the code for the web browser. It's pretty much really small code. So here in the first line, we have imported the library socket that I talked about. And the second line is like f open in file handling. It is like opening the socket on given host port. 
So the socket dot socket, the former one is a library and the later one is a method within this library. And the first argument says, make an internet socket. And the another one tells, make a stream socket. You can give different arguments as per your needs here. As of now, we have only open ports, but they are not connected. So the third line is for connecting them. I want to fetch one file from this Carnegie Mellon University site so i'll connect with that side and i'll use the port 80 and connect and then i'll be connected with it so now here we are connected from our python program to the host on the other end now after making connection we will make our request let's have a look at the syntax so it's get then there is url and here we'll specify the http protocol so now furthermore our url will also be separated as per described in this slide so here will be the protocol here will be the host and here will be the path which we want to access so likewise here this is the protocol this is the host and this is the path we want to strings.html we will get in response so let's see rest of the code now one thing different about the socket from the file is that you can both send and receive from the socket now in the protocol it is important who starts the first con conversation first and as we are client we will first start the re send the request via this line so we have sent the request. Now it's time to receive the request. So we'll receive the request over here. Here it says give me 512 characters and it keeps on putting the data. Now when the file comes to end, it means it will give the EOF, end of file. And then the length will be negative. That is less than one it will come out of while loop and will close the socket and here is our own web browser yes that is actually a web browser code we wrote see how is it easy and simple it is now let's run and see how it is working let's open the terminal so here I will run this code so this is what server gave us response so here you can see this is the response we got and it says okay this is the protocol this is the response number 200 which is says okay the date and what the server they are using so uh, this is pretty much really big page so to let you know that we got the right content this is the html you can see so this is the html page content we got so as this is our very basic web browser we are not having a fancy and powerful web browser here but you got all your content that you wanted so now let's move to the next section of this module before moving to the next module there is one do it yourself exercise that you should be doing so all you have to do is research something about url library and retrieve web page with using url lib and here is the answer now we are heading to the next module where we are going to work with XML and JSON in Python. Why XML and JSON? Because they are the two common formats we use when exchanging the data across the web. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language and JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation.
Now let's look at some XML. This is the XML structure. It is more structural than HTML. You can also refer to XML document as tree structure to have better understanding. So here is our example and here address is the root of the tree and name, street, phone, all these are its child. Now name has its value like Arti, Pannu and some for like rest of them like for street has 101, San Fernando, likewise. So now let's see a very simple example to use XML with Python. Yes. Let's run that code. Here is the code. So first here we have imported a library and next we have got the XML data. This is the library that gives us the XML parsing mechanism in Python. It is a library which we will be doing all the magic for us. This data can come from now these are the data so this data can come from anywhere like if you want to import those data from web you can do what we did in previous models by either using socket or url lib it is triple quoted strings you can see over here and now we have this data that is i we saw in the previous slide now we have this data in this variable okay now see here we have used St uh, stated that this library et as et so instead of using the whole string we'll be only using the et and what this method from string does is it takes your xml string and converts it into a xml tree and once we have this tree we can do all lot of things with this portion of data so like for example here find function looks for the node that matches that provided string from the xml again tree again same for get and so when we uh, it only prints one name and phone type cause we are not looping through it you can add some code in here if you want to loop through both of them so let's see this code in our terminal so i'll clear this and let's run so you can see we got arti and the phone type for arti was office Now let's move to the next that is JSON. Yes, you can say it is identical to directories and list and pattern. We call it key value pair kind. Now a days JSON is more popular than XML for web services because of its simplicity we can relate to json format to our existing data structures we have in our programming language so working with json is more easier for other programmers so they prefer json nowadays now let's look at the simple code so now if you look at here as usual we have imported our library then we have our data here and uh, as you can see it's a three triple coated string which is having json like format now here we parse the json with loads which loads we get a dictionary this loads will convert this json data into dictionary and in here, this code we have is a simple looping through the both element and print out both the element value. So let's look at that in our terminal. And
so we got information for both of our data so this is pretty much it as next step you can now jump into the world of api there is a whole new world of apis out there that you can play around we hope you learned something new and interesting today in the next class we will dive more into apis until the next time keep learning and keep coding thank you